Okay, hello to everybody. Uh, my name is Jen Simano, and I am your voting rights campaign coordinator with the ACLU of Colorado. You can't see me, and no, I don't know if you can see the meme on the screen, but that's also not me. In an ideal life, I would be a cat. Uh, no, we have, I had some technical difficulties, so I will be the woman behind the curtain today. Um, although I'll only be speaking briefly, and as a data privacy person, it's a very comfortable place to be off camera. Um, no, but in all seriousness, let's dive in. A big hello, a warm, warm welcome to everyone who's tuning in. Um, we are so excited to have Colorado Secretary of State, Jenna Griswold, here to give you a direct update on 2020 elections and ballot accessibility during this pandemic. Um, we definitely want to use this space to get to you as much information as possible. But before we do that, uh, let's do some very basic housekeeping and take just a moment to acknowledge where we are right now, both historically and as a community, but particularly as a community of civil liberties supporters and fierce voting rights advocates. Um, you know, for the past 100 years, ACLU has been fighting, and we're fighting even harder now. Um, and of course, we're doing that remotely. We are educating community members, filing and winning lawsuits, and pressuring politicians to, to do things like release people who are detained or incarcerated, to stop punitive responses to the pandemic, and to stop surveillance creep. And of course, we're also helping with election contingency planning so that casting your ballot doesn't mean risking your life. Um, and again, in the spirit of getting right into things, I will just say this. Part of the reason it's, or the main reason it's so important that we have this conversation today is that there is so much confused, confusion in the world, informational confusion, um, from misinformation, which is just accidental, to more nefarious disinformation. We know it has been studied over and over again that that type of confusion depresses voter turnout. Um, and so what we're here to do today is get the actual facts um, from a person who holds the office as well as us as an organization who holds very high standards when it comes to creating free and fair elections. Um, and this information, again, is to help you distinguish Colorado from other states. Every state holds elections in a different way, and it can get very confusing to consume national media or have friends in other states and think that we are like um, Wisconsin or Iowa when we are not. So having this clarity of information will help you, but we also want to make sure that you don't just keep it in the confines of your brain. Tell friends, families, coworkers, help dispel um, all the confusion out there by giving them the real facts. Um, that isn't just some fluff to say, it's actually a bit of hope in this world that we live in is that even against um, adversaries and all the chaos in the world, you as um, a loved one are the, the most trusted and strongest messenger. So use that power, help cut through the noise, talk to your community members, help us get out the vote. With that, I will kick it to one of my awesome bosses, Denise Maez, our public policy director. Um, she is usually under the dome at the Capitol, but not being kept away from fighting for civil rights policies, um, even remotely. Uh, so with that, Denise, for you. Thank you, Jen. Thank you for that introduction. And uh, I think being under the dome right now is one of the last places I would want to be. <laughs> um, but. Um, I really do want to welcome you, Secretary of State Jenna Griswold, for joining us. It's really, really much appreciated. Um, there are many things to say about um, the Secretary of State Griswold. She is, of course, the Colorado's um, Secretary of State. She is the youngest one, as I think, elected to this office. She is a lawyer, grew up in a working class family from rural Colorado and has dedicated much of her professional career on anti-corruption and importantly is relevant here protecting the right to vote and she's the right person to speak on all of these issues i'm going to give her an opportunity to make some opening remarks or some comments that she may have prepared or what have you and then um, i'll have some questions for you and then we'll open it up to the crew to ask their questions so thank you again for being here really appreciate it and it's well, good to see you 
It's nice to see you too. Uh, thank you, Jen. Thank you, Denise, for those kind words. Um, but more importantly, thank you for all the work you do to protect Americans' constitutional rights. Uh, and I, I just think, uh, I, I remember learning about the ACLU. I was in middle school. Uh, my dad told me about it. And I remember going up to my eighth grade history teacher saying, hey, do you know what the ACLU is? And he thought I meant something about it, but I didn't. I just thought it was really neat that there was an organization uh, out there fighting to protect our constitutional rights. Um, and, and I would just say your guys' work is more important as ever, uh, as we see our democracy being chipped away at uh, by those in, in both state and federal government. Um, so I, I really do want to thank you for your hard work, especially when it comes to anti-corruption and voting. Uh, you know, we just have to look across the, the nation to Florida or Georgia, uh, Texas, North Dakota, to see the attack on voting rights alive and well. Uh, we saw a governorship potentially taken in the suppression of uh, African Americans last election. We saw Native Americans suppressed. Uh, we saw students suppressed. Uh, and very luckily, uh, we can do the opposite of that in Colorado. Uh, and that's why I'm so honored to be Colorado Secretary of State, because we can show the rest of the nation what our constitutional rights are all about and, and be really the beacon on the hill of hope uh, for voters who are being suppressed in other places. Um, you know, before we get into a, a basic intro about what we're doing to make sure that our voting rights are protected during COVID-19, uh, I, I would just like to say that we are really well positioned uh, to deal with the pandemic when it comes to our elections. Uh, the, the last decade of work, uh, which I know Denise was at the uh, forefront of with the ACLU, uh, included uh, uh, programs such as online voter registration to make it accessible to register to vote, in-person early voting, so it's not just an election day, uh, everybody run to the polls and, and try to squeeze in. Uh, and the big one, the fact that we send a mail ballot to every registered voter is going to make all the difference in 2020 and has made all the difference previous. You know, I was really proud to build on those successes last year uh, when I was able to lead and, and work with the legislature to pass one of the largest democracy reforms in the nation. Uh, so not only will we have online voter registration and in-person early voting and, and same-day voter registration and mail ballots for registered voters, uh, we switch things up to add more polling locations across the state and more drop boxes so that all Coloradans have access. Uh, and for the first time ever, we are guaranteeing a polling location or a drop box uh, on all of our tribal lands at tribal leadership's request uh, and also our public universities. Uh, we were also uh, uh, fighting corruption last year. Uh, I was happy to, to pass uh, comprehensive campaign finance reform and lobbyist reform. Uh, and we can talk more about that at a different time or, or today. Uh, but we also passed automatic voter registration, which went live last week, uh, making it more accessible for Coloradans to register to vote. We did parolee reenfranchisement. Uh, so we're starting from uh, the top of the mountain, just climbing up. Uh, and I, I will tell you, um, I, I am concerned about what will happen in this election. Um, you know, Colorado, we're poised. Uh, in our presidential primary, 97.5% of Coloradans voted their mail ballot. Uh, that's great. That's amazing. Uh, and we're going to push uh, voting the mail ballot uh, as a way to social distance uh, during our statewide primary coming up and in November also. Uh, we're also, uh, I, I just put out emergency rules, we're about, about to put out some guidelines uh, about how we can safely vote in person because we don't want to close in-person voting down. Um, but I, I will tell you that I am concerned for this nation. Uh, what we don't want to see is a pandemic used as one more step in, in the, the history of disenfranchisement uh, to suppress turnout. We don't want the pandemic to be used to suppress turnout because when you have too low of turnout, uh, that may question the legitimacy of the actual election. Uh, in Wisconsin, uh, which happened at this point six weeks ago or so, should serve as a, a wake up for the nation. Uh, just looking at Milwaukee, 180, pol 180 polling locations were reduced to five. You saw uh, 
people with masks waiting in long lines, uh, older people, older grandmas standing in lines for hours and hours and hours in a record low turnout. Uh, and frankly, people got sick also. So that's just not how to do it. Uh, and if we are forcing Americans to choose between uh, the ballot and their health, uh, th that's just a, a fundamentally unfair choice. Uh, and very luckily, Colorado uh, has this great system that we can work with the rest of the nation to expand. Now, I, I would say before we jump in um, that at the beginning of March, I saw the pathway uh, to get national mail ballot. I saw it. Uh, there was uh, lots of Republicans in Congress, it, it, secretaries of state governors who wanted to move forward. Uh, but then the president started tweeting uh, and he's continued to tweet and he's ramped up his attacks on mail ballots um, because he has clearly stated that he believes mail ballots cause Republicans to lose races. That's what this is about. Don't, don't, don't be fooled. This is what this is about. Um, but, but we know here in Colorado that that is not true. In 2014, lots of Republicans won uh, using mail ballots. Uh, and study after study shows that there isn't a, a partisan uh, advantage to mail ballot. There's a voter advantage. Uh, the voter advantage is that a, a voter doesn't have to risk their health uh, to vote in 2020 if they have a mail ballot. Um, so, you know, uh, we, we just got to keep on pushing. Uh, we, we are going to be a model of how you can vote during an epidemic. Uh, and then we're gonna continue to work with the rest of the nation to make sure that all Americans have the same rights that Coloradans have. Uh, because our rights, number one, do not stop in times of crisis. Uh, they don't, they also sh are not supposed to shift uh, just when you travel over a state line. Your fundamental right to vote is, should be the same in Colorado as it is in Georgia or Texas or Florida or North Dakota. Uh, so I, I just really appreciate the ACLU for all your work in, in protecting our voting rights and uh, just look forward to this conversation and questions from, of course, you all and, and the audience. Thank you, Secretary. That was terrific. That was terrific. And I, I have known you to always have a lot of passion and support for voting rights. So it's it's terrific to to see you being in this position. Oh, thank um, you. Absolutely. And um, thank you. Yeah, and you're so right. I mean, you were you referred a lot to um, about how Colorado has really advanced voting rights. And what's really interesting, and you alluded to all of this or explicitly stated it that you know, there's been a lot of noise around the country about mail-in voting, and of course, we have the person in the White House who is adamantly against it. Um, and so, I, I mean, I see us as a beacon in all. Of, and yeah. you, you listed like a whole, you know, a whole list of things that we've done that are really pretty incredible. So, here's the question that I have for you. I'm just, and I really am curious about this. Why are we? Why do we even have in-person voting at all? And maybe especially people might want to ask that in the time of COVID. And I, I'm not suggesting, of course, using the pandemic as a way to freak people out. But as I understand, Oregon just does mail-in, doesn't have in-person. So if you could speak a little bit to that, I, I'd appreciate it. Sure. Um, well, I, I think mail ballots are fantastic. Um, and, and a lot of Coloradans use it. But there are just going to be some people, for whatever reason, that have to go in person. Uh, and in Colorado, we have the right under law to register on election day and cast a ballot. Uh, so whether it's a person with a disability that you, needs to use a, a voting machine or a first time registrant or someone who just didn't get their replacement ballot, they all have the right to vote, uh, even during a pandemic. And that includes in person. Um, so it, it's really interesting because uh, you see uh, nationally, or, or we have seen uh, nationally over the last two months, a swing, a swing towards all mail ballot uh, and no in-person voting and a swing towards all in-person voting and no mail ballot. Uh, I think the right mix is the, is the mix of both, what we do in Colorado. Uh, and we've seen results. Uh, so the, there was just a New York Times op-ed two weeks ago that showed a, a 9% increase in turnout uh, since our adoption of, of universal mail ballot. Um, 
those gains were even higher for African American community and the Latino community. Uh, so we just saw increases in participation. Um, but one of the reasons that we are uh, the number one state in not only voter registration, but also voter turnout consistently, is because we allow voters to vote uh, how they feel best, whether that's in person or the mail ballot. Now, we are going to push voters to vote the mail ballot uh, as a way to social distance and protect all of our health. Um, but we're going to keep in-person voting open also. Um, so, you know, folks during a primary tend to go in person a little less than in a general. So in the presidential primary, we saw only 2.5% of Coloradans go in, um, which is, is pretty good. Uh, but we do want to make sure that if someone goes into a poll, it's safe. Um, so I just issued two Friday nights ago emergency rules about how to vote in person safe. Uh, and some of the things in those rules include making sure that uh, the, the polling uh, election judges and, and workers are following public health guidelines, uh, that they're wearing masks and other PPE mandated by their counties. Um, we're uh, encouraging folks, uh, all the election workers, to take their temperature before reporting to work. Uh, we are uh, making sure that if anybody needs to use voting equipment to vote, uh, that that is sanitized between each use. Uh, and of course, that social distancing is observed in the polls. So we want to make sure that uh, voting is as safe as possible, as accessible as possible, so that Colorado can continue to prove that our election model works, uh, that we're innovators. Uh, and the good thing is that every time we innovate, the rest of the, the country notices and they try to steal what we're doing. Uh, and likewise, if anybody else has a good idea, we try to steal it. Uh, and that's how we should be working. That's, that's what states are supposed to do. So this is just one other, another opportunity uh, to show just uh, Colorado's innovation in, in these really hard times. Yeah, I, thank you for that. And I'm sure, um, at least I know some of the work that you've done in this regard is you're more than yeah. willing to go around the country, right, to another state and say, hey, this is how we do it in Colorado and offer, you know, tips and uh, how to do it. And right, I mean, yeah. you're more than willing to do that. So I think that's terrific. Yeah, so just over the last two months, we've um, you, you chatted with almost every single state. Uh, so I've had lots of conversations with secretaries of state one-on-one -on -one, um, about how they can quickly adopt our system of voting. And then our elections division has been having a lot of one-on-one -on -one calls, but then also just uh, nationwide calls about how to do mail ballot and how to ramp that up very quickly. Um, so, you know, uh, our success as uh, Colorado, um, it, you know, we, we're part of the nation. Um, if the president comes out and says, well, this election was illegitimate because voter turnout was too low. Or if there's that, that notion, uh, we can have the best elections in the nation, but if the rest of the nation isn't coming there with us, uh, we have issues too. So it's in all of our best interest that all states succeed, all states that are willing succeed. Uh, so we've been really working one-on-one, -on -one, but also on a lot of the federal legislation uh, to make sure that if federal legislation is passed, uh, it's passed in a way that is workable for states to be able to mount whatever systems they have to do very quickly. Makes total sense. I just, so two quick follow-ups, uh, sure. only because uh, one of them, um, so since we've been doing all mail ballot, um, have we seen any fraud? Is there, is, there, is there really, does this argument that there could be voter fraud, does it really have legs or is it just uh, you know, a lot of air? Well, I would say it's predominantly a distraction. Um, you know, uh, the good and the bad about President Trump is uh, sometimes he tells you what he actually thinks. Uh, and for <laughs> him and his opposition uh, to this, it's all about um, him believing that this somehow is going to affect his chances and his allies' chances in 2020. So he wants to stop mail ballot uh, because he thinks that gives them a competitive edge. Um, that's it's wrong. Uh, if faced with the question of risking their health, Republicans, Democrats, and independents will all, uh, some of, of whom all will stay home from the polls. Um, so, so that's I have wrong. Seen some, he, I've seen some recent polling on that. You're exactly right. Where yeah. if, if it's yeah. to, uh, if it's to risk uh, getting the virus or, or not, and, but still being able to vote, that's the ideal is to be able to do it from home. 
Exactly, exactly. And if not, and, and I could talk about, we're going to try to uh, set up curbside pickup and, and support our counties and in doing innovative things for uh, in-person and, and quasi-in-person voting. Um, but to answer your question, number one, it's a distraction, but, but assuming the, pre the, the, the premise, uh, Colorado has shown how you can have clean elections and mail ballots. Um, you know, we have a history of clean elections under bipartisan secretaries of state. Uh, and I, I think what we're doing can be ad adapted by the rest of the world world or the rest of the nation at the very least. Let's start with the country. Um, yeah, and right. we have guardrails, right? So for example, uh, we have bipartisan teams of judges verifying those signatures on the back of mail ballots to uh, the signature uh, repository that we have. Uh, and if there is any indication of, hey, the signature doesn't look right, uh, we, we contact the voter and, and they can have a chance to, it's called cure or fix their signature. Uh, and if not, it gets referred to the attorney general. Uh, from 2018, the referral rate from the general was 0.0027%. Um, so, you know- That's tiny, times, that's a tiny number. <laughs> tiny you know we have the guardrails we you know sometimes you hear a lot about ballot harvesting uh it's all these terms uh made to uh shock and scare uh but we have a law in the books that says uh any person can't cut cut collect more than a certain number of, of ballots right so right. luckily we have the guardrails up um and they're working uh but i will say mail ballots are also one of the reasons we're considered the safest state to cast a ballot in uh, not only because of the signature verification and everything else we do to, to, from chain of custody onwards, uh, but because frankly, you can't hack a paper ballot. Uh, and one of the biggest risks we have this election outside of COVID is, is cyber attack. Um, so, you know, the, the mail ballot, the paper ballot, uh, it's good for accessibility, but also for security. Interesting. I, it's a, it, I had not really thought about that, but that seems like so obvious now that you say it. Why, why mail-in versus, uh, I know other states have talked about um, absentee, you can just sign up for absentee voting. I assume part of the problem there is you actually have to sign up for it, right? Whereas here in Colorado, you automatically get a ballot regardless. Yeah, I, I think anytime um, you put up barriers to voting, less people will, will vote. Um, you know, I, I grew up very working class, uh, started working summer after seventh grade, worked through college, um, and just understand a lot of the stresses that people are under. So why should, you know, a, a mom who works full time and has three kids uh, have any less of a right because she forgot six months ago to send in an absentee request card to vote on election day as, as someone who has uh, less of a hectic family life or, or work life. Uh, again, it's just not how our fundamental constitutional rights should work. Um, but the good thing is, uh, is that 36 states either offer mail ballot or no excuse absentee ballot, uh, which is, is just a form of mail ballot systems. Um, so the, the idea that we could expand national mail ballot uh, across the nation by November is really feasible because we're not starting from zero. We're starting from 36 states uh, having uh, some level of, of, of amplified program uh, and then the rest of the states um, have excuse, uh, where you actually have to bring an excuse like a doctor's note, uh, but you can still get that absentee mail ballot. That's crazy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's, really, that's really cool. Um, I do wanna give you a, an opportunity to, to say a little bit more about the protection piece. Now, you know, typically when we talk about voter protection, we usually mean uh, no intimidation, voter access, yeah, and yeah. I do, and I do want to, I want to get there. Um, but in this, but the first thing I want to ask is actually more literally. And you, you mentioned some things in your opening comments about what you're doing to make sure that people are safe, um, especially um, in a in a COVID world. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it would be really helpful for those listening in to to know what those are so that we all feel pretty comfortable if we needed to go to in person sure. or just just in general i mean even more drop sure. boxes helps someone be yeah. safer so all of that list would be super helpful okay awesome um so first and foremost uh update your voter registration now uh go to govotecolorado.gov maybe not now you can either do it in a five <laughs> right. window. Right, wait until after this uh, webinar is over, right. Um, but go vote colorado.gov. Uh, just make sure your information is updated so your mail ballot comes to you. 
Um, but there's a, a couple things. Um, I, I just fundamentally believe that no Colorado, no American should have to risk their health to cast a ballot. Um, so that's why we want to really push mail ballot, um, but then we're going to be ready for in-person voting. Um, and part of the, the CARES Act, uh, states were given some money to spend on uh, making sure that uh, federal elections are, are safe in 2020. Um, so that means we have the funding to, to really innovate. So some of the things that we're going to do, uh, I, I just ordered uh, a lot of PPE for every single county. We're going to be shipping uh, hand sanitizers, bleach wipes, non-bleach wipes, masks, uh, a lot of equipment to all of our counties. And if they need anything else, uh, they're just going to buy it and, and we're going to get the tab. So we're going to make sure to reimburse them to make sure that they have gloves, disposable pens, all of that ready to go. Um, so that's first and foremost. Uh, and then when you go into a polling location, we're going to make sure that those regulations that I described earlier are, are in place, social distancing, uh, making sure that there's masks. Uh, strongly suggesting to the counties that they use uh, uh, disposable pens if someone is physically voting. Um, you know, uh, when you go and vote in person, uh, not all Colorado counties um, have a, a predisposition to a piece of voting equipment. So a lot of time you're, you're using a paper ballot. But if you do use that voting equipment, either because you need it or that's just how the county is, is uh, pushing your vote. Um, we're gonna sanitize in between every single one. Um, by the way, another thing that I think is really neat that I am just really happy to be able to offer uh, is uh, allowing or uh, funding county clerks to get backup locations, backup polling locations, and in case a, a location were to be contaminated, that we're ready to go to a backup. Uh, I'm also offering paid sick leave for all of our election judges uh, because I, I just don't want an election judge to be like, you know, I'm, I, my temperature is not quite too high, but I'm feeling really crummy and I'm coughing and I have symptoms. We want that person to stay home. Uh, and the reality is for a lot of Coloradans is that things are tight. They're very tight and a day's pay uh, is, is really needed for a lot of people. Um, so we want to make sure that, that we're incentivizing good, healthy behavior. Um, we're also going to be, uh, my office is going to be picking up the tab for uh, backup election judges uh, so that we have judges in, in case someone gets sick. Uh, we're also going to be pushing out um, a, a judge recruitment effort to help the counties. Um, you know, a lot of times election judges tend to be a little older. Uh, so we want, um, you know, in case your typical, the, the person who does it every single year, who loves to do it, just doesn't want to do it this year, we, we want to support the counties. Um, but besides that, uh, so that's like when you're in, in the polling location, um, but say you really want to vote your mail ballot, but you can't find it, and you miss the deadline to be sent a replacement ballot, and it's too late to, to get one sent in the mail, um, we're doing something really neat. Uh, we're going to be using the system that we use to deliver overseas and, and military ballots for everyday Coloradans in the state of Colorado. So first and foremost, we're going to urge people to, to come and, and pick up their ballot. Um, we are urging the county clerks to have curbside pickup, um, and we would fund everything. Um, but if someone cannot physically get to a, a polling location to, to pick up their ballot, um, we're going to be delivering it electronically. Uh, so we have a system uh, that it's called Democracy Live. We're the only state in the nation to have an end-to-end -end encryption, so a safe system to send a ballot and retrieve it. Uh, so for Coloradans who are quarantined or for whatever, they're immune compromised, for whatever reason they can't go, uh, the first preference is to send that ballot and they print it out and send it back just like a mail ballot. But if they're like uh, my mom, for example, and don't have a printer, uh, they're gonna be able to, to return it uh, electronically also. So we're thinking creatively, uh, and then we're really pushing the, the county clerks to take us up on the offer of funding to be innovative. Take your polling locations outside, set up tents, do curbside, do drive-through. Uh, we want to see innovation, um, and I'm just really happy to be in a, a position of, uh, and with a team of people who think big and dream of the possibilities, 
Uh, and so hopefully we see the counties uh, take us up on that, uh, either this election or, or the big one in November. I like the whole concept of drive up and drive through voting. That's kind of cool. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see if um, we have enough time to do it in June, but I, I hope to see it. Uh, at least yeah. one county is going to be doing like a, so Denver does like a mobile voting um, and a couple other counties are going to do that too, which is pretty neat. So you get a van and drive around, go to different spots. Very, very cool. Very cool. Um, this is an interesting audience question and it, it I'm going to ask it because it, kind of fits with what you've been talking about, a lot of these contingency plans. So here's someone, um, well, it's actually not someone, apparently there's a few folks that have asked this question. Okay. Um, is there concern that the United States Postal Office collapses and is not an option? Is there a contingency plan for that? Wow. So in, in the, the words of Elizabeth Warren, I have a plan for that. Um, <laughs> nice, nice. Let's hear we it. We have a plan for that. Well, first and foremost, you know, I, I think it's um, on the level of risk, uh, relatively low risk that the post office will close. Um, we've been working very closely with our entire delegation, both sides of the aisle. They know how important the post office is for our democracy. Um, you know, uh, in the last stimulus, money was actually passed for the post office. Uh, but the, the, the snafu uh, is that uh, Secretary Mnuchin needs to enter into a loan with the post office. That's what I thought. I knew there was some sort of weird thing, but I didn't know exactly yeah. what it was. Okay. So they would have to repay the loan, um, but they have to nail down the terms. So first and foremost, call on Secretary Mnuchin to put our democracy first. Stop this ridiculous fight with the post office. It's infeasible. It would not work if the post office went down. Um, and, and let's just get that loan passed. Uh, and I, I'm optimistic that that will happen. Um, but, but, you know, say it doesn't. Uh, one of the things in 2019 um, that I, I offered uh, in our big negotiation of the voting rights bill that we passed, it was called the Colorado uh, Votes Act, uh, was paying for uh, a bunch of new drop boxes. Uh, so I took out of my budget uh, the amount of money needed to put 90 new drop boxes across the state. Uh, and then with this federal money that we just got, we're going to put more drop boxes across Colorado. Uh, so we're going to set up a grant program. We're working out the details to provide every county with at least one drop box uh, in bigger counties that need them with more. Uh, so we're going to be adding more access. And then that system that I just described of delivering ballots electronically, we're making sure we're investing in that system so that it can have the capacity for a, say worst case scenario, the post office goes under. It's not gonna happen, but let's just assume. Uh, we'll be ready with that system where we can deliver ballots electronically, people with printers print them out, drop them at a drop box, uh, and everybody else uh, returns them electronically. Uh, I hope we don't get there. I don't think we will, but we do have a plan um, for that. Very. I was just going to say, it's good that you just have a plan for that. We I have, that's, we have a plan. that's terrific. Um, here's something else I, I guess came up as a plan. Okay. Um, getting on the ballot, um, we're all aware, or we're all aware of, or used to uh, the canvasser. You know, the person in your um, like. I do, ex uh, please excuse my dog, my, my little chihuahua tries to be a, a big dog sometimes when she sees another <laughs> So anyway, um, we are used to the, um, you know, the person that approaches you in the grocery store parking lot or comes to your door. And of course, times have changed. And so there's a little less of the actual, you know, person to person. And I'm aware that the governor executed an executive order in response to this new world. And I'm wondering if you could give us a little bit of info about the executive order. And I also know there's a there's a couple of lawsuits against yeah. it. And and I and I understand why you may not want to go into those specifics since it's pending. But I just thought I would at least open it up for you to tell yeah. us what's in that executive order and, and then whatever else you want to share about it. Yeah, so ballot access is incredibly important, obviously, both to, for candidates um, and, and also for ballot initiatives in Colorado. Uh, and I, I really do believe that we have to uh, make sure our democracy remains accessible. Uh, even during COVID-19 cannot be an excuse to degrade our democracy. Uh, we, we have to, to really protect our democracy. 
Um, but anything that we adjust, of course, has to be fair, lawful, and constitutional. Um, so this was a, a harder issue because there's a, a lot of um, very descriptive language in the Colorado State Constitution about how uh, ballot initiative petitioning should work. Um, so it took a, a while to, to get an executive order nailed down. Um, I believe the governor signed it uh, maybe on Saturday. Is that right? I think Saturday. I, everything is, every day is a dog year in, in pandemic time. No kidding. I wake up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the gist of it is, um, it, so he, he said, signed an executive order, and then I will set up the emergency rules. My office will. Uh, it will take us a couple of weeks to set up the emergency rules. We're working on it right now. Um, the gist of it is, is the governor authorized, uh, basically by waiving several statutes, uh, me to put in uh, uh, rules of how to use mail and email to supplement in-person uh, signature gathering. Um, so the gist, you, you have to stay tuned. Don't, don't take my word as gospel. We're, we're making the emergency rules right now. It's legally complicated. So that's, that's the caveat. The gist is that you'll, you'll be able to have in-person petitioning. We'll be working with the state epidemiologist on, on some guidance on that as safe as possible. Um, and then a, a campaign or a petitioner can use the mail and email uh, to be able to also facilitate signature gathering. Uh, so say you're a petitioner, you can send by snail mail a, a document. Um, the voter would have to sign the document for a ballot initiative. Uh, and then they actually have to have someone witness it also, uh, because uh -huh. that's in, in Colorado, uh, Colorado's constitution. They would send it back. Uh, the same with email. Uh, you would email it. They would ha have to print it um, just because of the way the constitution works. Do their signature either send it back by snail mail and, and we're uh, of course looking at scanning or taking a screenshot of it and sending it back to the circulator oh okay. and the and the witness signature is on there as well a witness signature too to yeah yeah got it. yeah you need a witness signature um it's uh it, it will it's a pretty big endeavor to set it up um we're working really hard to set up how this should work um and i think we were all just really looking for a, a way to to keep access in a time where it's just really hard to gather signatures. Uh, during sure. stay at home, uh, signature gathering stopped. Uh, and during safer at home, um, you know, I think it's just been logistically really challenging. Um, but there is litigation. Uh, I, I think we are, um, the executive order itself is being challenged. And I, I think those hearings are on Friday. Um, so I, saw, I saw that, and, and there's no uh, injunction, so I guess you continue to do your rulemaking, assuming that all is well, I guess. I mean, you, I mean, you go forward and do your rulemaking and then wait for the court to determine the legitimacy of the order, I gather. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I, I believe that part of, I, I think there's two lawsuits right now. Um, one of the lawsuits uh, is asking for uh, a restraining order, so basically oh, okay. stopping the execution of um, the emergency rules. Uh, either way, the, the rules are not going to be done on Friday, um, so the <laughs> litigation probably will be done before the rules are. Uh, we are still um, crafting the rules, uh, and of course, we'll just follow whatever uh, the, the district court, and I, I assume it will go potentially up. I, I guess we don't know. We'll just see what the court says. Um, you know, the governor also issued an executive order, a similar executive order on Saturday for nonpartisan and unaffiliated candidates uh, to use mail and email oh. to get onto the ballot too, because their uh, timelines of collecting signatures uh, is different than um, uh, major party and, and minor party candidates. Um, and, and we'll just, we'll just see, you know, um, sometimes you want, uh, so for example, with uh, uh, candidates, uh, there was a lot of information about how many candidates getting onto the ballot. Um, I ultimately have to execute the laws uh, so we can advocate for something. Um, and ultimately, it's up to the court uh, to decide what the, the law is at that time. And then the legislature could always come and adjust it um, if they so choose. Yeah, no, totally. I get that. Um, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, and, and I think uh, if, I, if my timing is right, I, I think you may may have time for only one more question. And um, okay. um, one of the things that we talk about all the time in the voting rights world and at the legislature is 
um, why, what, what, what is the uh, likelihood or probability of someday um, having either postage paid by the Secretary of State uh, for ballots so that, you know, when you, years when there's a really, really big ballot, is it one stamps or two or yeah. all of that? So what are, what's the likelihood of that in, 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 our, in our lifetime or in our near future? I, I would say the likelihood is always growing. Um, I, you know, there's a couple things. Um, first and foremost, uh, there's a law uh, that says the voter has to pay for postage. That's Is that right? Law. I did not yeah. know this. We need to get rid of that law, I guess, huh? That, well, that, that would be the first thing to do. Um, so, so there's a law on that. Um, but second, you know, we've invested really heavily in drop boxes. Um, and the post office is great. There are partners, um, but we, we decided as a state, we prefer Coloradans to, to drop off the ballot at a drop box. And, and our system is, uh, is designed in a very specific way. Um, you know, if, if you live down in Cortez or Durango uh, and you put your ballot in the mail, it goes down to uh, New Mexico uh, before it, it comes uh, to your I'll county be I'll be darned. Yeah, so like, you know, that means a couple extra days. And in Colorado, because we've adopted this uh, Dropbox centric instead of mail centric returning of ballots, uh, we have a law that says your ballot must be received by your county clerk on election day by 7 p.m. Right. Uh, so, you know, there are some things to consider when we incentivize using postage. Um, I, I will say, uh, let the cat out of the bag. Uh, because the post office tweeted that this is their official policy. I, I want all your members to know that if someone puts the wrong amount of stamps uh, on, a, on a letter or, or on a ballot, not a letter, on a ballot, uh, it's still delivered. It is still ah. delivered. Even if you don't put postage on, it's still delivered. Uh, and your county clerk know. picks up the tab. Uh, they are cash strapped. Um, if you can afford your postage, pay your postage. Uh, but no one, it, it, no one should ever not have their ballot delivered for for lack of having a stamp. That is actually good to know. People need to yeah. definitely know that. Yeah. Um, I guess there are some states where it's paid, but maybe they don't have uh, they don't have that policy, or they don't have the um, the drop boxes. Um, yeah. Like so some states we just put in a very a lot of money on, on drop boxes i'm going to put more money into drop boxes um in other states they don't have that law that it has to be received on election day a lot of states it, it has to be postmarked um by election day uh by the the deadline i, I would say um if you're a hundred percent mail ballot mail ballots take a lot longer to process so, you know, it already takes Colorado, uh, you guys know those long election nights when races aren't called, that that's normal uh, in a mail ballot state. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, I guess I shouldn't guess why the legislature did what it did um, in saying like it had to be postmarked by election day. But I, I could imagine that just because we're 100% mail ballot and, and offer that to all eligible voters, uh, that the processing just takes a lot more time than if you're a state that's 15% mail ballot and, and the rest in person. Um, but, you know, I'm always dedicated to making sure that our elections are as uh, accessible as possible and, and do want to innovate. So there's definitely conversations that will continue to be had over the next couple of years and, and even this year. I, I appreciate that very much. I'm still one of the ones that likes to hand deliver it so I can get my little sticker that says I voted. <laughs> I used to want to go in person just for that reason. And then um, my, my dear friend, Rosemary Rodriguez, who I know you know, she yeah. said to me, uh, no, Denise, because what if you get run over by a bus? So she was much more concerned with me casting my vote <laughs> in my life. But, you know, that's okay. <laughs> that's funny. Um, Secretary of State Jenna Griswold, everybody, I really want to, again, thank you so much. It was incredibly informative. Um, I thought we got through a lot. There's a bunch of questions. A lot of them were things that we that we covered we didn't get to okay. all of them but that's but that's the way it rolls so that's, that's thank you again so much and um i'm going to turn it over to jen Simona, who's going to close us out so thank you again thank you so much denise great to see you same here okay jen hello thank you denise and thank you secretary griswold that was super 
super helpful. It's nice to get clear, <laughs> concise facts. Um, and I just want to reiterate this point. This is not just meant for a Zoom meeting. Um, spread the word to your loved ones in a socially distanced, safe safe way. There's lots of confusion out there. Um, I also know some of the questions that were coming up that we got on here um, were directly related to concerns about in-person voter suppression, um, knowing that there are groups putting literally millions of dollars into hiring folks to quote unquote work the polls, um, but they're but they're really there as adversaries. So we see that, we hear you, and that's also why we're calling on folks to join our volunteer efforts uh, for the 2020 election because we're working on a plan to help that. Um, and we're also happy to follow up with the Secretary's office to see what plan they have. And the way that we will communicate that information to you is just as we have been through email. So today I will send you a follow-up email with an opportunity to sign up to volunteer um, and some other follow-up things. But again, this is just a very, very start of our 2020 work. And so we thank you so much for taking the time to participate. We really couldn't do this work without you. Have a great afternoon.